Okay, so everyone will probably see a record button come up. I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to play a little recording. This is a little bit about the Cal Poly um, pilot plant while we're waiting for some more guests to come. Sounds good. Okay. Hi, I'm Molly Weir, FSN Department Pilot Plant Manager. I'm going to be showing you around our pilot plant. The pilot plant is located in Building 24, Food Processing, where we also have our culinary lab and teaching lab. The pilot plant feeds roughly 1,000 students during the academic year. There are currently 10 food science and nutrition classes that take place in the pilot plant. Students from both our food science and nutrition science majors have class in the pilot plant in the first two quarters that they join our department. Our pilot plant is also heavily used by our faculty and undergraduate and graduate students to perform research. You may be wondering what a pilot plant is. Well, a pilot plant is a small scale facility that is utilized to find out the behavior of a process before using it on a large industrial scale. We utilize small scale equipment to showcase different unit operations related to food processing, such as drying, <laughs> thermal processing, mixing, extrusion, concentration, and particle reduction. These pieces of equipment are very familiar to what the industry uses, so our students are familiar and trained to be ready day one when they graduate from our department. This is our 4,000 square foot pilot plant. We have a smaller pilot plant, which is another 1,800 square feet, but that'll be for another few. This space has multiple uses, teaching, research, and industry-related projects. As a food science student, depending on your concentration, you'll have up to 10 labs in this space during your time at Cal Poly. During these classes, students are working in the pilot plant learning about mass balance, heat transfer, heat penetration, thermal processing, types of drying, and physical properties of food, quality measurements, and basic sanitation. You might have heard that Cal Poly has some enterprise opportunities for our students. The Food Science and Nutrition Department offers to the students the opportunity to be on the team running the production of jam, barbecue sauce, and chocolate. The students are in charge of all aspects of the production of these products, from ordering ingredients to production and marketing. We have about 20 to 30 students working on this team. If you want to try them, you can buy them while at Cal Poly in our campus market and most of our grocery stores in the area and available online. We are selling our products and we want our students to learn the rules that apply to any production facility. Our pilot plant is a food grade space and is inspected by the Food and Drug Administration and the California Department of Public Health. The pilot plant is designed to be durable, cleanable, and flexible. Most of the equipment is on wheels, which allows us to put together setups that are optimized for the production of a specific type of product. The facility has a variety of utilities, steam, compressed air, water, vacuum, and various electrical capabilities, 110, 208, single and three-phase, and 480 three-phase. As a student using the pilot plant during a lab, you can anticipate following our good manufacturing practices, which cover your attire, conduct, and health and safety. Safety is a top priority, so you will see personal protective equipment located throughout the facility. The pilot plant has a variety of different pieces of equipment, lab scale freeze dryer, tray dehydrator, Hobart mixer, stork spray dryer, Clextrol extruder, JBT retort, Dixie double seamer canner, multi-vac vacuum sealer, shear mixer, steam jacketed kettle, vacuum kettle, our jam and barbecue line, Blancher, and for a full list, please see our capabilities document on the FSN webpage. You might wonder what all of these pieces of equipment do. They are used to prepare foods such as frozen vegetables that need to be blanched before freezing to maintain quality, to a delicious jam, or to make a delicious freeze-dried fruit that can be added in your cereal, for example. In this space, you will learn about the wonderful world of food processing and learn how to make sure the food you produce has the quality attributes and the safety standards that you are looking for. There are multiple support rooms within the pilot plant, such as the quality assurance lab, walk-in coolers, freezer, dry storage, equipment storage, dry analysis, and a sensory kitchen. Lab courses scheduled in the pilot plant will typically meet in building 24, room 113. The classroom is utilized by the instructor to go over the lab activities prior to entering the pilot plant to begin the lab. Your labs are designed so every student can use the equipment and not only get a demonstration of the equipment. It is therefore very important to have this debrief time to make sure our students will be safe and ready for an amazing experience in the pilot plant. Thank you for watching our tour of the FSN pilot plant. And for more information, you can view our website, check out our Facebook and Instagram accounts, or contact me for more info. Well, everyone, welcome to Fall Preview 2020. We are very, very, very excited to have you here today to talk about 
what we do at Cal Poly in the food science major. So I'd like to say welcome to all our guests. My name is Dr. Amy Lambert, and I am one of the faculty members here at Cal Poly. And we have several special guests today. Not only those of you who are interested in becoming food science majors at Cal Poly, we also have a few current Cal Poly students, and we even have a recent five-year graduate, well, maybe six years, I don't know the math, we can ask Adam, but a, a Cal Poly graduate to talk about his path as well. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started with our presentation today. So what I hope to do is um, get through a lot of this and then our guest speakers will talk a little bit throughout the presentation, but I'm hoping to have some question and answers at the end. So if you have some questions, write them down, put them in the chat. We would love to answer them. We are here to help you make great decisions about your future. So today we're going to talk a little bit about food science, um, the major, the concentrations, what are some job opportunities that you get with this degree, as well as talking about some of the clubs, some competition teams in the department, and many, many more. And so with that, let's talk a little bit about the business of what Cal Poly Food Science is. We are among the largest food science and nutrition departments in the country. We have faculty that have not just gone to school and gotten several advanced degrees in food science, but we also have faculty who have worked in industry for a number of years. So those faculty can take what you, we've learned and apply it to making a product and we can then bring how what you're learning applies to the food industry in making a product. So you'll get the theory and you'll get the practical experience. One of the advantages of an education at Cal Poly is learn by doing. Our students, first quarter, freshman year in your intro to food science class, actually get into the plant and into the labs and start making food products. The video that you saw today where there were students making um, jam, that is one of the labs that you will do in your intro to food science class. You will actually get to make Cal Poly jam. Some more background information about us. Um, in order to ensure that you're having a solid foundation in food science, IFT, the Institute of Food Technologists, has indicated certain programs across the country as IFT approved programs. And what that means is IFT has an outline of curricula and minimum standards that the industry feels you need in order to be a food scientist when you get out with a bachelor's degree. Cal Poly is an IFT approved program. We are also a Research Chefs Association approved program for our colonology concentration, which we'll talk a little bit about, a little bit more about in the future. So our curriculum is solid curriculum. And because we have these approved programs, it does carry weight when you go out and look for a job because it means you did get a rigorous education in the discipline of food science. And that's a positive when you want to work in the food industry. So basically, what the food science major is, is it takes all your fundamental core sciences and it applies it to understanding how food is produced. And here are some of our former students. We have um, Car Nathan Carroll working at Dandelion Chocolates. We have Ryan. We have, oh my goodness, I can't remember her name. She was a darling. We have all of our students working at Goddard Chocolate. We have Jessica Kloos, now Jessica Ranjay, working at Chosen Foods. When we have food science, the major, how do you know if food science is for you? If you like food, if food is interesting to you, if you go home and you make food, but you never make it the same way twice, 
because you always want to experiment with what the results are, then science might be for you. If you like science and wondering what's happening when I'm making this food, food science could be for you. If you want to learn how to take science and apply it to real world problems, food science is an option. If you want to understand how come foods in a refrigerator don't last as long as foods in a box or in a can on your shelf, and you want to learn how you can do that, food science is for you. So here, what you see in these images, on the top image, that is one of our food safety labs. And beneath, this is another picture of our pilot plant. So food science might be for you if you want to understand the conversion of raw materials to a product. So here on the Central Coast, you can drive along in some of the areas here and you can see fields full of kale and fields full of Brussels sprouts. Well, how do we take that kale and Brussels sprouts and put it into a packaged salad? What needs to be done? What needs to be considered? How is it done? Kale and Brussels sprouts don't magically appear in a packaged salad, but when you go and get a degree in food science, you can understand what needs to be done in order to get that, whoops, product in a package. Have you ever eaten Special K with strawberries and wondered, how did they get that strawberry in there? And how come it's so nice and red? And how come when I add milk, it tastes like a real strawberry. You'll learn how to do that with a degree in food science and you might actually freeze dry, those are freeze dried strawberries, freeze dry products in your classes. And then here's some novel uses. When people think about soybeans, they think, oh, tofu. Well, the world today is changing. The world today is having plant-based alternatives to traditional meat and dairy products. Soy is used in the Impossible Burgers. You might have seen those in the store. Soy is also used to make non-dairy yogurt. So you'll learn about how these plant-based proteins are being used to mimic non-plant-based meat products or dairy products. So if I get a bachelor's degree in food science, what does it entail? What kind of classes do I have to take? Well, you'll take classes on food processing and packaging. So how do you get tomato paste into a can of tomato paste? Or how come sometimes you can buy soup in a can or soup in a pouch, you'll learn about packaging. How do I know how to keep it safe and what's in it? You'll learn more about food chemistry. How do we keep food safe? If you listen to the news, sometimes you'll hear a lot about food safety incidents. Well, if you look at those products where food safety situations are happening, a lot of times they're in fresh foods and short shelf life foods. Well, there's not as rigorous of a thermal process to kill or inactivate organisms, if at all. How do I keep a packaged salad safe without heating it? You'll learn these things in food science. Food engineering. How do I know how fast I have to push this fluid through a pipe and heat it to make sure it's safe? Quality assurance. Well, my goodness, we want to make sure every product going out of our company's doors is safe. You'll learn how to do that and some of the things to consider about making that product safe. And of course, we all like to eat. How does it taste? And what does the consumer want? And so you'll learn that in sensory evaluation. And then you'll say, you know, I really like experimenting with this kind of product, or I really like changing this ingredient and this product. Well, there's a class that you'll take your senior year called product development, and you will actually work on developing a new product using all of the stuff we just talked about together to build that product. And this picture here, this is an example of our current culinary lab. Given the recent COVID restrictions and social distancing, we are having face-to-face -face labs. 
and a couple of the students that are here today will tell you this is what the lab looks like and these plexiglass shields have been put up as a way of protection and keeping social distancing so we're taking some of the current restrictions or current considerations very seriously so in food science we have concentration so what do you want to concentrate your studies on? Advanced food science is an IFT approved curriculum. The whole food science degree is an IFT approved curriculum. Specifically, the IFT concentration is um, an IF or the advanced food science concentration, I'm sorry, is an IFT approved concentration as well. And in the advanced food science major or uh, concentration, You'll take a little bit more, a uh, little bit more math and a little bit more food processing and, and process engineering on how to piece different pieces of equipment together to make a different or to create an end product. We also have colonology and colonology is the research chef association approved curriculum. And I would like now to have one of our current students, Jordan, talk about why she chose Cal Poly and what she finds interesting about the colonology concentration. And with that, Jordan, your, your mic is off. Great. Go for it. Hello, everyone. Uh, when I think about why I chose Cal Poly, one of the primary reasons is that when I graduated from high school, I did not want to get my bachelor's degree. I actually wanted to go directly to culinary school. Uh, and when that wasn't an option for me, I started looking into other possibilities for my future. And really the only thing that I found that does what the Cal Poly program does was the Cal Poly program. This program is so hands-on in the Culinology department. There was only one quarter of my fall freshman quarter that I wasn't in the culinary lab in the kitchen cooking, working with a professor, or doing some kind of research. It's so involved. There are nutrition elements to the classes. There are cooking elements to the classes. You actually learn cooking techniques how to dice an onion properly, what sauteing does, what the difference between boiled and steamed, and uh, any other kind of cooking method would do to a product. It's so diverse. Uh, and the program really, really is a culinary program with the science element added. I think it's really unique. It's super cool. You get to work with all of your professors really closely, and it's worth it if this is what you want to do, if culinary science is interesting to you. Thanks, Jordan. As you can see, Jordan has a lot of passion about what she's done, and she gave a lot of great examples of what I know I've observed her doing in classes as well. So you might ask, what is colonology? Because it's not a term you might use every day. Basically, colonology is the marriage of culinary arts and food science. And when I was in industry, early on, there wasn't a lot of chefs in product development or colonologists in product development. Now, everyone's hiring, colon, everyone, a lot of companies are hiring people with culinary experience. Because if you look at this image on the Culinology Magazine, meal kits, when a food company makes a product, they want to make it taste like it tastes at home. And with food science, the advanced food science concentration, you learn a lot about the processing and preservation skills to make sure that that product is safe. <coughs> Excuse me. But the colonology overlay on this is a positive one because if you want it to look and taste like what it tastes like if you made it fresh at home, colonology understands how you blend certain flavors and attributes to get an end desired product. <coughs> Excuse me. And so the merging of the culinary arts in food science is fantastic because consumers are not wanting processed foods. They want quick foods that taste like they made it themselves. And that culinary influence is very beneficial in the field of food science. So what do you do with a degree in food science? What kind of job do you get? Well, there's lots of different types of research scientists. 
But we talked a little bit about food safety. Well, there's jobs where you can work in regulatory work. You have all, you interpret the laws from the FDA and you work with companies in making sure that those laws, that what you're doing is adhering to those laws. And you can be an auditor or an inspector checking those companies and helping them make sure that they're producing that product safely. You're kind of a third party eye helping to put, you know, safe food products out on the market. You can work in ingredient development. How do we get a new ingredient into a food product? Um, what needs to be modified? What needs to be changed so that it can produce a safe product? An application scientist. So how do you take whey protein, for example, and, and what are different ways that you can put a whey protein into a food product? Okay, whey is from animals. It has a different taste than something like, let's say, a pea protein. So an application specialist could do the same thing with a pea protein and understand the differences as an, a food company selling these ingredients to help companies produce their end products. Quality control supervisor. Those individuals work in the plant and make sure that every product coming off that line is as safe as possibly can be and checking that you can manage a food processing plant. You can be a production manager working in a food processing plant. You can be a sales rep. You can do product development. You can be a research chef. You can be a sensory scientist. You can be a food chemist. There's so many opportunities in the food world that you can get a job with a bachelor's degree in food science. Here are some of the employers of our students. Now, there's a lot more companies that have hired our students than what is represented here. But companies that aren't on here are places like Beyond Meat. Um, oh my goodness, places like Curation, making packaged salads, places like Ready Pack. There's all sorts of different companies within California and outside of California that have hired our students to be members of their team as food scientists. One of the things that Cal Poly offers is we have over $22,000 in scholarships for food science and nutrition students. We hire student assistants to work closely on with us, the faculty, to help set up labs and to help make sure students are doing things properly and safely in the lab. And so, for example, we've had, we typically have 16 scholarship students a year. We have 30 to 40 students per quarter helping us out with delivering our courses. We have students that are involved in research or project work with faculty. So I have projects going on and I have a team of students that work with me. Throughout the entire food science and nutrition department, we have 70 to 90 students per quarter working on these projects. We also have students working in Cal Poly production. If you remember the video we were watching as we were entering everybody in, those students are paid students and they're getting real hands-on experience producing products that go in a package that go for commercial sale. And in total, we have about 176 students working and getting hands-on experience outside of the experience that they're getting in their classroom in our department. That's a lot of engagement and a lot of hands-on and learning by doing, not only in class, but also in real applications. One of the uh, scholarship and paid experience opportunities we have is something called a Foodsters Internship. And Foodsters get $1,500 a year and it's an internship to work with certain faculty members. And so I'm gonna have one of our current students talk about his experience as a foodster, as well as why did he choose Cal Poly in food science? And with that, we have Dom. Hi everyone. Um, so my introduction to food science at Cal Poly might be a little bit different. I actually came in to Cal Poly as a business student, um, kind of just because I didn't really know what to apply under and I didn't know what I wanted to do. 
I always liked food. I loved eating food and I was interested in science, but I honestly had no idea what food science was. Um, and then my first quarter at Cal Poly, I took a public speaking class and got one of my speeches was just a, an informative speech on anything you want. And because I was interested in food, I wanted to do something food related. I think, I, I think my speech was on high fructose corn syrup. I wanted to learn more about it. And my, I went into office hours to my speech professor and was talking to her. And she said, I think I have someone that you should talk to. She said, my, my workout partner at the gym is a professor and I think you should set up a meeting with her. So a couple, uh, next week, I was in Dr. Lammer's office talking to her about food science. Um, and then by next quarter, I was in the process of changing my major. And here I am now, uh, a graduate student, part of the blended program working with Dr. Lambert. So it's been a pretty cool transition for me. And I got the opportunity to be uh, one, of the, one of her foodsters. And that program is really awesome because it connects you with professors and gets you engaged in research. Um, and if you're looking for a research opportunity, something outside of the classroom, there are so many opportunities here. I've worked with, you know, a lot of different professors on so many different projects. Um, and if that's something you're interested in, there is tons of opportunity in all different aspects of food science for you to get involved in. Um, yeah. Thanks, Dom. Yeah. And I remember meeting Dom that very first day, thinking, a business student in food science? Well, here we go. Little did we know he'd be my blended master student. Yep. And just to note, the blended master's student is, the blended master's are for those who are interested in getting a master's degree. It is your senior year is a hybrid between your senior year and your undergraduate degree and your first year of graduate school. So that's another opportunity that, if you're interested, is available at Cal Poly. And so we talked about classes and we get how exciting it is, but you know, the college experience is more than just classes. What else can I do outside of my formal class requirements to get involved at Cal Poly? We have a food science club. So most majors have a club within their major and then there's other clubs of personal interest around the university. But this is one of our, whoops, my mistake. This picture in the upper right corner is actually at the Food Science Club's end of the year picnic. And I think what would be best is if we have a current student tell us, Jackson, tell us all about the Food Science Club and how he chose Cal Poly. And if you could touch a little bit on your advanced food science concentration, that'd be fantastic too, Jackson. Don't forget to hit your mic. Hey everyone. Uh, so the reason I chose Cal Poly had a lot to do with, um, well, first I was really set on a food science major and it was really between Cal Poly and UC Davis. But during my tour of Cal Poly, I connected with uh, one of the professors, Dr. Kravitz. He's not here anymore, but uh, he was here my freshman year. But he was nice enough to set up an interview with me and um, he's walked me around the campus while I was there, showed me in the pilot plant and really got me like, um, really had me fall in love with a food science major. So. In addition to that, we have a really great downtown area. I love the slow area. We're like a, minister, or a few minutes drive from a lot of beaches, a lot of great hiking spots. So it's just a great area to, be, to live in. Uh, so for a food science club, I think it's one of the best ways to get involved with a food science major outside of your classes. We get, um, can you, we get you connected with industry speakers. We have speakers come every meeting. Uh, we have, get you involved with, um, different job or internship opportunities. It's a great way to find a summer internship if you're looking for that. And on top of that, we have a lot of fun events. Um, in the past, we've gone to the Fancy Food Show, which is a uh, event up in San Francisco. A bunch of food companies come. Uh, it's a big expo. You get to try a lot of different foods, see what's going on in the industry, what new areas are coming out. We have a lot of good uh, volunteer opportunities too. We, um, we volunteer with local farms. Uh, First Fruit Farms, I believe, is what we've done in the past. Uh, we've done a lot of different um, trips, uh, IT events, uh, SCIFs. I've been to Chicago with uh, the College Bowl team, which is a trivia competition, which is also part of the food science major or the food science club. Um, 
So also the advanced science concentration. If your interest is more in, like uh, Dr. Lambert said, the math side, the engineering, processing, you may be more so interested in that concentration other than colonology. That's why I chose advanced food science. I wasn't so much so interested in the cooking part of food science, but I was really interested in like the, well, the safety side, the industry side, and how it works on like a industrial scale. But yeah, there's a lot of great ways you can get involved with food science. Thanks, Jackson. As you can tell, Jackson's been very, very busy during his time at Cal Poly and very happy about it too. So we have students that have, and you heard Jackson talk about competing on um, academic teams through the Food Science Club. So here on the left, we have uh, college bowl teams. And so if you've ever watched Jeopardy, it's Food Science Jeopardy. So the students will go to a regional competition and there'll be different universities within the state of California and outside of California. They'll go to a, one of the locations they'll compete, and then the winner goes on to national. Well, here is our national team. We had a student team make it all the way to national. That is huge, and I think that year they came in third. That is, it was so exciting. It was so exciting. So Dominic was also on, that you heard from today, was also on the College Bowl team, and you can see Jackson right here. You've also seen Nathan Carroll in the beginning of the presentation. He's the one that's working in dandelion chocolates as a chocolate maker now. And then we have the IFT product development competition. And this was the Disney product development competition. And here is a group of students that actually, this is the year we had three teams. We had a team at the Disney competition at IFT and national finals. So we were in, I think we we're in Chicago here. And we had a team that made the developing solutions for developing countries um, where you had to come up with a food product for a, com a country and a location where there was a significant need. And it was the same year as the College Bowl. We had a great group of students. And this year, our students actually won the grand prize at the IFT competition. And we made it yet another year. And you can tell it's Disney because they're all in costume. You, they, you get involved. And we had another team make it to the Disney finals. They got an honorable mention. So there's a lot of practical experiences that can happen, not only in the classroom, not only in the plants, not only with the clubs, but also being involved in these teams. And we have a former student. It's me, Adam Yee. We always tease Adam when he was in, in our classes because Adam is a charming guy. And Adam, you will see his picture here, was on competition teams as well at Cal Poly. But Adam's talk today is important because he's going to talk about his experience at Cal Poly. But what, is it, what did his experience at Cal Poly do for him when he was out in the real world? And Adam, take it away. All right, thank you, Dr. Lambert. I still call you doctor, um, regardless, okay. whatever. Uh, yeah, I am here to hype you up about food science because that has been kind of my pathway throughout all this. Um, so I guess I'll follow the trend in talking about how, why I chose Cal Poly, um, mainly because I was actually interested in culinary school, did a class, didn't really like it, it was too hard. Um, uh, at community college. And then I Googled what to do with my life, ended up Googling food plus college and ended up finding a, a Wikipedia article about food science. Um, didn't know what it was, decided to choose as my major and chose Cal Poly because it was cheap-ish and um, it was really nice. I mean, there's the mountains, there's a the beach, like really explore the area. I miss it every single day and I've been like everywhere in the US. Uh, it is like perfect weather. Um, so, oh man, I just, uh, and hiking, anyways, so besides that point, um, so because of Cal Poly Food Science, my career path has been exciting, and, and I'll, I'll tell you why that, that's the case, because um, as Dr. Lamb would know, I was the guy who was involved in everything, and people think it's because I was like some ambitious dude. No, it's because I really wanted free food. Um, I wanted to, the good thing about being in the food science program is that you get to eat a lot and you get to go to all sorts of different classes where you can eat. 
And so no matter where it was, no matter if it was in production at making jams and chocolate, if it was um, doing some product development competitions, which were really my favorite part of the whole program, uh, I got to eat. <laughs> Um, and there's, you know, there's a lot of classes that also cook and I could sometimes time the, if the time was just right, I can take something home. Um, so that, you know, that was the primary focus, but the secondary focus that bled into learning a whole bunch of skill sets that I use in my daily life. The classes are very useful. They will teach you, you know, the, the structure of the food industry. Um, but the extracurriculars are the things that kind of fill in the gaps. So with product development, for instance, you know, we were this scrappy team of undergrads. I, you know, I, I would say like our group of like maybe 20 people were the ones who started the product development trend in Cal Poly. Um, so we were just this scrappy group of undergrads who had like no idea what we were doing and just jumped in this. And year after year, we got like kind of punched in the face. But, you know, eventually in my third year, um, third and fourth year, we started to really get it. And we got into place competitions. Um, and we got to go to travel to like Chicago or New Orleans or wherever. And then after that, we started beating Ivy League schools. We had grad students and had really, you know, technically smart projects. And that kind of shows you kind of the scrappiness. Like we don't have the resources, we didn't have the resources these institutions did, but we still were creative about it. Like funny with Disney, we invent, all we did as a gimmick was put like monster hats on our heads because it was Monster Inc. And then next year and the year after, everyone did these extravagant costumes. So, you know, that type of creativity is, you know, scrappy, but creative and important. Um, so what did that do to my career? Well, eventually I got a job shoveling granola bars at 4 a.m. in a factory. That was nice. Then I made protein bars in a pretty nice corporate environment um, where, where I got pretty into uh, pharmaceutical or nutraceuticals like shakes and bars and all that. Um, so there's a health benefit when it comes to like being a food scientist. I got a lot of free shakes and bars as well. Um, after that, I, I had an interesting, weird side project that I did. And this, this attributes to the scrappiness that I kind of developed in Cal Poly, which was a podcast. Um, it's called My Food Job Rocks. Uh, I don't know how many young people listen to the podcast, but a lot of old, older, my age people do. Um, Even and, older and, like me do. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, so there's, if you go to myfoodjobrocks.com, there's, you're probably going to have this as a class assignment too, unfortunately, but um, you, there's over 230 episodes with people in the food industry, not just food scientists, but business people, startups, new tech, like plant-based stuff or cell-based stuff. Um, pretty much anything you could think of is on that website. So, and I sort them out all by like kind of topic and subject. So it's easy for you to kind of pick and choose what you want to listen to. Um, there's a lot of jobs in the food industry um, that are quite amazing and it's it's quite amazing kind of the ecosystem that goes on. Um, so from that, like at episode 100, um, I interviewed someone who approached me to start a company and that, that allowed me to start a startup in Sacramento called Better Meat Co. Um, that did decently well. It raised a lot of money uh, and we struck a deal with Purdue. Um, thought my time was done there so I moved on and somehow got poached twice, one in Austin, Texas to work uh, to build a food incubator and another one at recently um, during the pandemic, I got poached um, to work at a high tech food startup called Motif in Boston. So I've been like all over the United States and not only that, but you also get to travel a bunch too, as they've mentioned with Chicago and, and other places. So I've been to a lot of different awesome places and ate a lot of great food because food scientists, especially in industry, know how to eat and they know how to analyze what they're eating and they recommend the best places. So uh, so I think to, in terms of a framework, as you enter this kind of new environment, and especially now this environment is definitely new, um, it's important to, under, to take advantage of your college experience. And there are gonna be many opportunities and everyone's trying to figure it out um, about the, about how you can be involved or how you can, um, just have fun. Uh, and this might be the only time unless you go to like grad school or something, but even then they're busy people too, um, to experiment and to develop these core skill sets that will help you further in your career. The, the lessons I've learned in product development 
have made me create million dollar products, not only protein bars, but plant-based meat. And, you know, in the start of it has been very useful to um, just kind of the psychology and the methods from going with your gut to um, strategies to test one thing over another have been super helpful. And it all stems from Cal Poly product development competitions. Wow. I think that was very, very well stated. And I think, again, you saw the passion in Jordan, the passion in Jackson, the passion in Dominic, the passion continues. Magic does happen in Cal Poly food science. All you have to do is just say, I want to get involved and you, someone will find something for you, whether it be a faculty member, you get on teams, you get in the clubs. There's so many opportunities to get involved. And so here, we'll jump into faculty projects. A lot of faculty have projects going on in food safety, brewing, processing, sensory and product development. Jordan, can you talk a little bit about your experience being involved as um, with, a, with Dr. Amin? Absolutely. Uh, I work really closely with the main professor in the colonology department, Dr. Amin, and he runs a lot of the different classes. He also has a lot of side projects going on. So the project that I'm going to start embarking on next quarter is a continuation of work that he's been doing with carrot waste. When you make baby carrots, you actually shave off all of the outside carrot, and then you just left with this little one. So you have all of this waste, and he's trying to find new ways to repurpose it. I've also worked with him to develop recipes for conferences when I was a foodster uh, in the program that Dominic talked about earlier. I've worked with him to develop curriculum. I've worked with him on all sorts of facets of colonology and culinary department. I also work with Dr. Lambert on the sensory team. We make uh, sensory test kits right now due to COVID for people to take home and do their own sensory test at home and analyze that data. There are a lot of opportunities with different professors. All you have to say, like Dr. Lambert said, is, hey, can I get involved? And someone has work for you to do. <laughs> And Dom, would you like to talk a little bit more about your involvement as an undergrad in some of these elements? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yes, the thing I got most hooked on is the sensory part of it. So Dr. Lambert has a sensory team and it's a really awesome experience. We get to work with a lot of outside companies. So what we do is they have food products and a lot of them are new and innovative food products and they want to know uh, what people like about them um, and who they're going to market them to. So we'll take in a lot of these products and we'll bring taste testers in, um, let them try those products and see what they like about it and what they don't like. And it's really cool because it provides a lot of good information into what you're doing right with your product um, and where you need to take it and where it stands against the competitors. So it, it's, for me, it was very interesting um, because it's not just what you like, you're engaging with a lot of consumers and getting a lot of insight. Um, and it's also really cool because uh, you get to network with these companies that you're working with through the sensory team. Um, and you get to see a lot of cool products. Um, and building off of what Adam said, you get a lot of free food too. So you can't <laughs> complain about that. There's a theme here. And then too, there's Every student will have to do a senior project and you'll get to work again with faculty on projects. There's opportunities for the summer undergraduate research program. It's a paid program where again, you'll work with a faculty member on a project and you may even take your projects to a uh, California State University research competition. So there's a whole lot of opportunities available to get involved in areas where you have your most passionate interests. And there's the business enterprises. Jackson, let's go back to you. Why don't you tell us about what you were doing in that video you were doing, making yesterday? Yeah, of course. So I am one of the managers right now for our production team for JARS. And what we do is we produce the Cal Poly jam and the Cal Poly barbecue sauce. Um, and basically we just like take it from like its raw ingredients of like berries, uh, the sugar, the pectin, the citric acid, and we use like um, we use the machines and everything we have in the pilot plant lab to produce that product. So it's been really great for me. I've gotten a lot of good hands-on work experience from it. 
just being know how to use the steam kettle, know how to use like the pH meter. A lot of the stuff that you'll use in future labs, you'll get to use beforehand and already know how to use it. So a lot of times in um, other labs in my like third and fourth year, like some of my fellow students like are using it for the first time, but I've had like future or like past experience with it. So they kind of look to me for how to use it. Uh, it's really great also just like to get to know your fellow like food science students. I made a lot of really close friends from working there. And um, one other thing I'll say about it is how I got that job was through um, my connections to upperclassmen my freshman year. So by joining the club, I had like a mentor named Addie and she worked in production. And from my college bowl team, I knew Jacob and he was one of the current managers then. And both of them uh, talked to Molly, our operations manager and said like, hey, you should hire him. He's like, he wants to get involved more. So I definitely recommend getting to know both your faculty and also your upperclassmen. Great, great comments there, Jackson. I think it's exciting. A lot of times when companies, when you go to a job interview for companies, they don't, they understand what you've had in classes, but they want to understand what those other experiences are that you've had. And in the production plant, you can have good days and bad days, and it gives you things to talk about on how you solve problems in industry. Same thing when Adam said about the product development competitions, you learn a lot. And every time you learn, you get better and you can do things a little bit better. And from his freshman year to his junior year, not getting into the competitions to winning the competitions and learning and understanding and engaging, that is huge. The other thing that you can do is you can get involved at professional meetings. We've talked about IFT, the Institute of Food Technologists. There's also an RCA conference. These conferences tend to be at different locations throughout the US. Southern California IFT or SCIFS occurs in the LA area and many times faculty will go down with a group of students and make it a day trip to go to the meetings. Uh, there's a big uh, suppliers night and that's a great one to go to because again, leveraging off Adam and Dom's comment, there's free food. You can go and see what the ingredient companies are making and they'll have different prototypes and samples out to show everyone and you can eat your way through the event. Then there's the fancy food show that was mentioned earlier in San Francisco. And then there's CLFP, the California League of Food Processors, which occurs out in the Central Valley. So you can get involved and you can go to all different events, but the big exciting piece of these, going to these events, you get to meet industry professionals as a student and you can learn how to talk to individuals in industry and what they're looking for in future employees and what kind of jobs they have available at their organizations. It's a great way to learn more about the major that you're in. So here is an amazing thing. If you choose to go to Cal Poly, you can join our outstanding students here at Cal Poly in doing the things that they get to do day in and day out and build their basis for a solid future in the field of food science. So why should you choose Cal Poly? I chose Cal Poly to be a professor because I wanted to take my knowledge that I learned from the industries that I worked in to be able to teach students not only why the, how about learning some of the basic principles, but how those principles are applied in the real world. My biggest gift to the food industry is training the best students to give to my friends in the food industry. And I think you can see here, there's a lot of excitement that the students have because the faculty engage and excite them by doing things learn by doing with hands on, but also these other experiences that enrich their college experience. To learn more, you can go to the Institute of Food Technologists website, www.ift.org. You can go to colonology.org for more on the Research Chefs Association, or you can go to Cal Poly FSN, to the Cal Poly FSN website. Here is our most recent COVID-inspired 
faculty picture for all of you to enjoy. And with that, I am going to stop my screen share and I'm hoping that you guys have amazing questions for our students and alumni. So if we have Amy, Elise, Lucero, and Laura, take this time and feel free to ask questions to myself or any of our current students. We would love to hear the questions that you have. And there's no bad question because if you don't know the information, we want to make sure you have it. So with that, does anyone have any questions? And you can unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. I know it's kind of scary. So let's do this. Let's engage our, our students. You know what, Adam? I think we'll start with you. Adam, now that you're out in the real world and you're a grown up, so to speak, what what did you not know going into food science that you wish you would have known that you can share with our current students and future students? Hmm. Um, you're going to be working with a lot of people with a lot of different viewpoints. And I think that's kind of, you know, what's great about college is that, well, what's good and bad is that you are working with more people. They might all have the same viewpoints as you though. Um, and when I say that, you know, same, same, class structure, same education in a sense, right? You're all getting bachelor's degrees, uh, maybe different fields, hopefully. Um, but, you know, in, in the industry, you're going to be working with people who are a high school educated in a factory or um, PhD D level managers or people, who, you know, are successful, even though they don't have a degree. And, and so you just have all these different viewpoints that from all over the world that um, is, is kind of interesting in the food industry. So, uh, you know, I, I think it is great practice in college as a stepping stone to communicate with um, just people from diverse backgrounds. But there, there, you de there is definitely something um, much more diverse when entering the real world. That's good. That's good advice. The communication piece. Yeah, that soft skill that that is becomes super important. Okay, so I'm going to ask our three current students. And I'll pick you, same question, I'll pick you at random. What has been your favorite thing at Cal Poly? I'll start with Jordan. Don't put me on the spot. All right. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing at Cal Poly so far, I think is not exactly at Cal Poly. Uh, Cal Poly owns a ranch in Davenport called Swanton Pacific Ranch that was actually affected by the recent CZU fire in the Santa Cruz Mountains. But my freshman year, I had the opportunity to intern there through the Cal Poly Food Science Program. They send a culinary to culinary students to go cook for all of the classes. And it's a Cal Poly funded program. It was my first internship. And it was the most amazing opportunity. I got to live outside on a ranch. I got to cook every day for students. I got to meet my Cal Poly alum in different majors. I met my current partner that way. He was a botany intern there. Um, and it was just the most fantastic experience that I had no idea was even possible through Cal Poly. So there are a lot of like little programs and little things that you can find that Cal Poly, especially the food science department offers that might not seem obvious at first, but are really worth pursuing. Good, thank you. Jackson, you're up next. Um, so I think like one of my favorite things that's happened at Cal Poly has been um, my trip to Chicago my freshman year with the College Bowl team. So back in my freshman year, I was, I think that was the only freshman on the team at that time. And I really didn't know anything at that point. I was just coming to the meetings, like just trying to like learn some stuff. But at the, um, at the area meeting that we went to, we were actually able to qualify which meant that in the summer at the IFT events, we all got to go to, we all got sponsored to go to Chicago for, I think it was about like four or five days. And we've got to see the huge expo, like visit with all these companies. I got to like interview with some companies for possible internships. And really just opened my eyes to like how much like the food science major has to offer. And it doesn't matter if you're a freshman, like you can still like get involved and be able to highly go to these big events and really put yourself out there and see what's out. Fantastic. Dom, to you. 
Yeah, I kind of already mentioned this, but for me, the sensory team has been my favorite experience. Um, as an undergrad, getting to work with upperclassmen was super awesome. And now as a graduate student, being a mentor to a bunch of undergrad students is equally as rewarding. And you get to make a lot of connections, not only with your fellow students, but as I mentioned before, the company's uh, networking has been great. And I've got to interact with a lot of cool people at a lot of awesome companies. So for me, that's my top experience. Okay, look, we've got seven minutes, so we're gonna keep on going. What has been the most challenging class you guys have had at Cal Poly? And I'm gonna start with Adam Yee, because he's got a big smile. Because <laughs> clearly he's gonna remember it because he's been gone for a while. Yeah, Dr. Laren is definitely the hardest person I've ever had. Just kidding. Um... <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> But you learned a lot. Look at how yeah. successful you've been. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's okay. Um, you got to excel, and you did. <laughs> and all of you guys will, and have currently right now. Yeah, that's, I'm trying to dig back in there. I, I think, you know, what's interesting about the food science um, yeah, structure is that you're diving into kind of like a buffet table of different job experiences. So, um, you know, you have a class on sensor, you have a class on food engineering, you have a class on quality assurance, and these are all actual job roles that you have in the industry. So what's nice about this buffet style is that you can choose one that resonates with you and you can choose things that don't resonate with you. So for me, like, you know, no, no um, rag on Dr. Uh, Lathrop, but I, I am not a fan of food safety. I don't like memorizing things uh, and I don't like the black and white um, kind of thing that I, I like the uncertainty and I, I like the creativity and uh, at least from what I've experienced with food safety um, pretty much none of that I think there are ways just like you can be creative as an accountant but for me like product developing and and getting you know feeling the food and, and creating I, from ideas to reality um, has been just something that I love doing and I, I've, I've taken advantage of that in college. Good. I'm going to hop over to Jackson. Um, I think one of the tests for me was possibly food analysis. I feel like that also, like how Adam mentioned, I had kind of like a lot of memorization for different types of like fat analysis and protein analysis. And like, there's like this test and this test, you got to like figure out which one does what. And there's a bunch of things like Kelberg and like, there's a lot of different memorization. But yeah, I'd probably say that was one of the tests. Okay, Jordan, what about you? Uh, I am a culinary student. Math is not my forte. Uh, food engineering with Dr. Chowdhury kicked my butt. <laughs> it was so many formulations, so many equations, so much math, but it was totally worth it. It was super rewarding, uh, and Dr. Chowdhury is super easy to work with and really helpful, so you can get through it. I believe in all of you. Good. Dom, last, last one on this one. Yeah, for me, I, I kind of building off what Jordan says, I think sometimes the hardest classes are the ones that tend to be the most rewarding because they kind of push you outside your comfort zone um, and help you learn a lot of new things. And for me, that was product development with Dr. Lambert. Um, she had us doing a lot. Um, we learned a lot about, you know, problems that arise in industry. So, you know, we'd come into class and we'd encounter a problem that we had to fix and I think that that's just an awesome experience and a good skill to know how to do. That's a good way to answer that question because I'm going to go back and I'm going to ask Jackson, now that you've successfully passed food analysis, what would you tell someone going into food analysis how to better prepare? Uh, it takes thorough notes I think I'd say and it's like really ingrained the information that you need to know because like a lot of it can get mixed up but I'm I got through it. I'm really glad I did because that's important information to know, obviously, for the industry. Adam, what about you and food safety? Now that you're out in industry, food safety is super, super important. So how did you, I guess maybe a different question for you, how did you take what you learned in food safety and how do you apply it into your day-to-day -day world? Because like you said, it's a buffet and it's, the food safety is important for everything. That's true. Yeah, it's a very interconnected buffet and all, all these subjects connect with each other um, in, a, in a beautiful orchestra, um, so to say. 
Uh, so food safety is kind of this, this line in the sand, which has to be completed before we do anything. So having this fundamental knowledge of how, you know, water works in a product, for instance, or um, how, um, I don't know, how microbes grow is really important when you develop products. Uh, you, know, you know, you could do like, you could be safe with like a powder. Uh, if you don't know the fundamental basis like protein bar development, like you'd add water in it or something, then that stuff will grow in there and it will mold or it will uh, cause someone to be sick. And same with like, uh, meat packaging. Um, so for food safety, it's, it's been helpful to like knowing the line in the sand. What is nice about the, you know, working in the industry is that the information is decently available just by asking someone by email. <laughs> uh, you should still know the fundamentals because they all interconnect and they all, they all make a really strong web. Uh, but it, it is nice to know that there are specific experts for these specific fields. I think that was a great answer, Adam, because I think one thing with food mm. is all the classes that you take going, I love your buffet example, all the classes that you take all fit together to make a meal. Yeah. You can't create a product without sensory. You can't create a product without food analysis, because if you're putting 10 grams of protein in a product, you got to measure that 10 grams of protein. You need to know food analysis to do it. And if you're putting protein in it in a bar, what is the water activity to make it sure it's safe? because you don't want to put a product on the market that's going to kill people. That's not good business. Yeah. And you need to know how to make a bar on an industrial scale. You don't have a bunch of people with rolling pins and KitchenAid mixers. So you need your processing and you need your engineering. So it does all go together. It, it might sound a bit scary when you hear the classes individually, but once you get to a certain, and everyone feels that way, but once you get to a certain point, all those classes come together and it clicks. And you can see with Adam how he talked about food and developing a product, how that is important. And I would like to say we are at our 12 o'clock stop time. I would like to thank Jordan who had to go off to class. I would like to thank Dominic. And I would like to thank Jack Jackson, our current students. And I'd like to say a special thanks for Adam for taking his time out of his busy schedule as a startup to come and talk about his path in food science. That's a big deal because when you can get students to come back and talk about it, it I learned a lot today from Adam. And so, you know, it's kind of this continuous, never ending learning. And I would like to thank the four of you for taking time out of your schedules to come and listen to what we have. Um, to offer at Cal Poly. We really, really, really would like to see you in the fall. And with that, everyone have a great day. And thank you, thank you, thank you for attending our session today. Good luck in your futures, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Good work, Adam. Yeah, I, I have practice. I, I've done this more than once. <laughs> Good. Well, I got to go because I have another meeting, but thank of course. you again. Thank you. Thank you. For your <laughs> no problem. It's good to catch up in this situation. Yeah. Great. Definitely. Bye. Bye.